For a while now I've been brewing up the idea of a really high output wireless Bluetooth speaker and I actually built one and it works pretty damn good. The choice of components is pretty interesting, but that's one of the reasons why it has such high output capabilities. The speaker isn't exactly lightweight either, weighing in at a pretty chunky 72 pounds. I don't know if it qualifies as portable, but it certainly is wireless. For the amplifier, I'm using the Dayton Audio KAB250 Bluetooth amplifier board, which just by itself also has some pretty interesting things about it. Being a Dayton Audio product, it's obviously available on PartsExpress.com. For power output, they're claiming 50 watts at 2 channels at 4 ohms, but that's it being powered at 21 volts. The recommended power supply voltage is between 12 and 24 volts, and I'm running it at 12 volts, so who knows exactly what power I'm getting out of the thing. For speaker drivers, I'm using two Eminence Beta Coaxial 10-inch woofers with Eminence PSD 2013S drivers mounted to the back of them. On a coaxial speaker, the high frequency driver is actually mounted directly to the back side of the low frequency driver, kind of using its dust cap as a waveguide, I think. Coaxial speakers are pretty good for saving baffle space, but the sound quality could certainly be improved compared to, say, like a waveguide horn and separate woofer. But these particular drivers have very, very high sensitivity, so on very little power, they have extremely good output. Like I mentioned before, the high frequency driver is actually mounted directly onto the back side of the low frequency driver. This titanium diaphragm high frequency driver has a much higher sensitivity versus something like a dome tweeter, but it also doesn't sound nearly as good as a dome tweeter. Other components in this system include Eminence pre-assembled passive crossovers that are specifically designed for the beta coaxial drivers. For battery power, I'm actually using an excess power deep cycle AGM battery which is 20 amp hours and will give me well over 10 hours of full volume playback. And in case you're wondering, yes, you do charge it with a car battery charger. The amplifier is tucked away in the very back on its own amplifier plate, and on the back side of that it has some very, very simplistic features. All you get is an on and off switch, a couple indicator lights, and a volume knob. Also on the back side you'll find the dangerously close charging posts. I'm not even going to begin to try to demonstrate how this thing sounds. The microphone on my Canon camera just simply will not be able to put up with the output that this thing gives out. The sound quality of the system can certainly be improved. These beta coaxials don't exactly sound the best versus something like a dome tweeter and separate woofer. But the output capabilities are absolutely hilarious. Playing some classic rock and using an Omnimic V2 and REW, I was able to obtain over 107 dB from 10 feet away. To put that into perspective, the Diamond Box Model L is claiming 111 dB at 1 meter. I don't know who would listen to one of these things from 3 feet away, so using an SPL distance calculator, we can see that from about 10 feet it only does 101 dB. Diamond Box also weighs about 50 pounds lighter, so take that as you may. I built this particular speaker just as a proof of concept using mostly parts that I had laying around. I'll get a boatload of other ideas I want to try out and a bunch of other speaker designs I want to test, so there'll be plenty more to come.